definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's the end of the bench here on 100.7 The Score, 100.7thescore.com. It is a music Monday as we broadcast live from the first United Bank Studios the Visual Edge IT hotline is 806-771-0973. You can get to us through the Yates Flooring Center chat line. A lot of people would like to get to us in more <laughs> ways than one. It is presented by the Happy State Bank. Uh, that is the app that is presented there on 100.7thescore.com. What's up, David Collier? What's up, Hacks? Pretty good weekend for you, baseball-wise. Uh, for all of us, for that matter, my goodness. I mean, we knew that they could play at home. We found out they could do it against a team that was tied for first place heading into the weekend in the conference. That was pretty exciting to listen to some of that and watch a, a lot of baseball. I watched so much baseball yesterday that every single inning ran together. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, what had this happened in game two or did it happen in game three? I yeah. have no idea. Yeah, that happens a lot in those. and. By the time you're sitting there at the end of the day, it's all kind of just blended together. Uh, but when it's blended together with you making plays, mm-hmm. you making timely hits, uh, you know, didn't score a ton of runs, but you scored more than they did uh, each time. And on Friday, you scored a ton of runs with yeah. 15. Uh, it was amazing to me how quickly West Virginia raised the, raised the white flag on that deal. It was we give up really early, and you could tell. I mean, it's like, uh, and then next pitcher has an inning and a third's worth of work this year. Um, pinch hitter, pinch hitter, pinch hitter, pinch hitter. And you're like, the, this guy's giving oh, yeah. up. And then Saturday, you uh, don't get to play because it was so nasty. And I'm thankful they waited, even though it, it does stink to play double headers, And it throws everything into a tizzy, but. Um, it was the right decision. You know, Tim Tadlock told me before the game that if you'd have had a dirt field, a natural surface, you'd have never taken the tarp off yesterday until the end of the day. I and that's when it got really cold. Mm-hmm. Once the rain stopped falling, it got really cold. So, yeah, good weekend. Yeah. I can speak from experience. Drove all the way to Dallas and Saturday morning after a night full of rain, even with a tarp on the field, uh, there was a river flowing in uh, Richardson right over the top of the softball field on an all-dirt field. So, yeah, it would have been the same issue here. Uh, you guys got to play on Sunday. They didn't get to play on Sunday, but probably for the better. You know, you got um, just this kind of rash of injuries. Um, on their side, J.J. Weatherholt's been banged up. They've got some pitchers banged up. Their number one reliever's gone. You think about all the relievers that you have are gone. You have a line drive taken to the face by Owen Washburn, who's just sitting there on the yeah. bench. Um, you just don't, you know, if you if you have time, which they did, because West Virginia took off this morning. Yeah, their flight was this morning. They didn't have to move any flight arrangements. I was wondering around. how that was working. Yeah, they're flying commercial. And they yeah. fly. They took off this morning. Okay. If you got a a whole day, yeah, might as well. Might as well. Yeah, and I didn't know their flight arrangements. I was surprised they didn't start it earlier, the series earlier. But if they're not flying out till today, it makes sense. Yeah. They're, uh, the guy that the, they brought in to do the color announcing was uh, a Texan. I think he lived in Houston. And um, he had made arrangements for Sunday late afternoon. And so, like, in the middle of the doubleheader, and I mean in the middle of, like, the first game. Yeah. He's like, out. well, there he goes. <laughs> hey. He's taking off. He's gone. We had a uh, 16-year-old birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Was that yeah. fun? Cameron. Yeah. I didn't get to spend hardly any of it with her, but uh, I was at the ballpark from yeah. 10.30 to, when are we in that thing? 8.30, I think. 10.30 to 8.30 at the ballpark yesterday. Uh, got home, gave her a gift. She immediately took off and used the gift. She had a shopping spree at the mall, evidently. So, uh, yeah, Cameron Faye turned 16 yesterday. So Happy birthday to her. I 
after uh, after the rain out, I had breakfast with the daughter, hopped in the car, drove back, was ready to sit on the couch, maybe take a nap. Got in, hadn't changed anything, and it was, hey, we're uh, we're going bowling in 45 minutes, so be ready. And I'm like, oh, sweet. Uh, so sit That's down. That's when you ran into up. Bullfighter. Yep, walk into the bowling alley. We're in lane like 15 or 14, and in lane 15, same little uh, ball return and everything, uh-huh. Bullfighter's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we bowled uh, for three hours. And uh, it was a good time. It was fun. Three hours. Yeah, uh, we we met somebody there that bowls there regularly. Oh, okay. Uh, so we had a three hour window, and they so were. That's there why the you were time. saying it cost too much. We were there yeah, for three hours. We, we were there for three hours. It did cost it was thirty beers. You had to buy, man. That, oh, quite that run, a bit. Quite a bit. No runs pictures, up there. No picture proof of me drinking any beer. So <laughs> price gets steep in a hurry. Yeah. It was fun though. I, I won fifty nine my first uh, game. That's a good. That's a good game, man. Yeah, one fifty nine the first game. It wasn't any better the rest of the time, but uh, I was over a hundred every single time. That was the goal. I remember uh, back in the day, and again, Choice thinks this is all bogus because the I rolled him in the uh, the uh, end of the bench Olympics. Um, I I would struggle to break a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. And then I figured out how to bowl and uh, well, see, I in the game that we were rolling and and I uh, beat him and he's still upset about it. I bowl old school, straight as an arrow. Uh-huh. Don't no spinning anything. So if I go off to the left or the right, I'm just in trouble. Um, and that's what I did the first game. By the end, I was taking a smaller bowl and just spinning it. But that first game, I had 159 and I just finished. And you know, bullfighters playing his own. Yeah, with his girlfriend or fiance, I don't know his significant other. Um, and he has one forty something going into the last frame, and I'm just watching. <laughs> he goes, he goes like strike, strike, yeah. you know, nine or something like that, and it's one eighty hey. something or one ninety something. I was like, ah, yeah. I was, I was beating him briefly for nine frames. <laughs> He's eaten up by obviously the the bullfighting and and bowling. Yeah. He is eating up by that bowl. He, well, he was going. He when we left, he was like, "Yeah, I'm back here tomorrow for something." I was like, "My goodness!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's eating up by it. Uh, so, good weekend of uh, sweep with West Virginia. Always good to beat those guys in anything, and uh, send them packing. And the Red Raiders are now twelve and nine in conference play, and they'll play tomorrow afternoon against New Mexico. Uh, we'll have Red Raider baseball with Tim Tadlock tonight. We'll get a chance to. Ask him all the questions and learn um, the inside workings of that sweep over the weekend. Very impressive to me that they took all those close losses in a row, um, 4-2, or 4-3, 4-2, all on the road, got home, did not have a whole lot of time to turn it around, turn it around, and got three wins in conference. Not easy to do. Look at how many sweeps there were this weekend. Not, and again, they had the you know second best or best ranking or standings um, in the Big 12. So, when you get that done, great weekend. We'll come back and have some headlines for you. Hit us up on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. More coming up here on The Score. Definitely not the starters. You're on the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. All right, Lucas, let's get right into it and check this calendario, por favor. Your daily look at what's happening in the world of sports, birthdays, and holidays. Let's check the calendar. In God We Trust Day, April Showers Day, Chemists Celebrate the Earth Day, Earth Day, Girl Scout Leader Day, International Mother Earth Day, National Jelly Bean Day. Ooh, Lucas, one of your worst ones. I can still see the wretch. Yeah, that was that was the most painful punishment. <laughs> Physically that I had to endure uh, just not knowing whether it's going to be tolerable or if it was going to be absolutely disgusting. And I I had to eat 
five and I think three were okay, but the two that I ate were were definitely two of the worst ones. Were you required to chew it completely? Because the second I would have known it was bad, I would just swallow the thing immediately. I I, I think it was so bad it didn't matter. Yeah, he, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he cracked it with his teeth and it was it was on. Yeah. Well, do you remember the two bad ones? I think fish was one of them, like stinky fish or smelly fish or something. And then I uh, can't remember the other one. I know one was like supposed to be toothpaste or something like that. That wasn't that bad, but uh, I can't remember. I know what the fish one for sure was the one that almost made me. See, he's done all these lose crazy. No, oh, no, I was here for. The blended McDonald's. Oh, yeah, the end, cool. the uh, the eating punishments, and and that's the one that carved him up the most. Yeah, because he retched. I didn't retch whenever I ate that Christmas. I don't understand thing. how you pulled that off. Was, that's one of the most nasty. And I could have eaten it. Things I would have had no problem as long as it didn't have uh, chocolate syrup. The chocolate syrup just killed it for me. It was way too much. It just that mixed with everything else. It was just the syrup. I mean, that's God, all I could taste. That chills, man. Yeah, it was. Um, it was the first day I came back on this show was the mustard ice cream for choice mm-hmm. that had capers in it. Yeah. Hey, I hear it's a uh, horse week. Yeah, that's derby nice. week. Yeah, it's derby week. I heard it might be uh, aired on this show. Yeah, that's the plan, I think. The final 30 of this show, and then... If you miss it, a repeat in on the bottom line. Because I believe you it's can, the uh, End of the Bench Derby brought to you by the do- bottom line. You show. can check out the odds for the horses on 100.7 The Score's Twitter or Facebook accounts. Got any birthdays? Yes, sir. Let's see. Machine Gun Kelly. Everybody loves Machine Gun Kelly. Don't know anything about him other than his girlfriend. 34 years old. Lucas, what does Machine Gun Kelly do that we might know? So he started off rapping, but now he transitioned into rock music. Oh, that's good enough. Uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan celebrating a 58th birthday. (laughs) And that's good. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I don't know anything about Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, Jack Nicholson. 80? 87. Seven. 87 years old. This one made me feel old. Marshawn Lynch. I mean, he's obviously retired, but he's a running back, so you don't think maybe he's as old as you, you once thought he was. But 37. 38 years old for Marshawn Lynch. LaRaven Clark, former Red Raider, 31 years old. Happy birthday to him. Uh, Candy Whitaker, former Lady Raider head coach, former Lady Raider basketball player, celebrating a birthday today as well. Rasheed Rice, birthday today. Not much celebrating going on these days for him, 24 years old. Uh, One of my favorite names, I don't know that he was necessarily great, but I got his autograph when I was uh, younger, Mickey Morandini. I loved his name. Yeah. Seemed like that would be a fun name to say if you were on the radio. 58 years old for him. And Terry Francona, now retired. Terry Francona is probably 65. There you go. 65 on the dot. hoo And those uh, are your birthdays. On this day in 1945, Adolf Hitler says, we're done. Admits defeat in his bunker. Plans to commit suicide after learning the Soviet forces had entered Berlin. Richard Milhouse Nixon died on this day in 1994. Um, Optical fiber is used for telephone transmissions for the first time. And the 1906 Olympic Games in Athens begin this day. April 22nd. It was the second Olympic Games of the modern era. Let's see if we've got a good one for. All right, give me a give me an Olympic sport that you would want to play and one that you would not want to play. It can be winter or summer. 
Um, I don't want anything to do with skiing and shooting a gun at the same time. I don't want that one. It'd be very hard to do. Yeah, so I'll pass on that one. (laughs) What is that? Is it Alp? I don't even know what it's called. Um, Ski shooting. One that I would want to do, I wouldn't do well in, but uh, I think I would be totally fine with just uh, doing the 100. Get done, go around, check everything else out. <laughs> I run, uh, I run, I don't make it. Uh, and it's over. Everybody else is done, and there's Collier. All right, well, what are you doing? I'm going to go check out all the other stuff. You guys Wave to the crowd. Thank you. Thank Drape you. the American flag around your shoulders. <laughs> run and go check out other events. No, that would probably be it, though, just something, a sprint. Because all if right. I was fast enough to be in the Olympics – and running the hundred, I'd feel pretty good about myself. One of my um the best bar game that I play is shuffleboard. So I would love to try curling. Yeah, I would I would like curling as well. That would be number one for me. And then my number one not water polo. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a tough one too. Drowning is not yeah. on my list. Yeah, I have no desire. Because uh, they would they would take me and shove me under repeatedly, and I would be out. Not not the best at treading water, as you can imagine. Lucas, give me give me a good one and a bad one. Good one would obviously be volleyball, whether that's the two man sand or the court indoor with the normal six people, and then the one I would not want to do is anything on ice. I love watching hockey, but I, I can't skate to save my life. Oh, yeah. So either figure skating or the one where they race around the like a race track. Spe- so, yeah, I would like yeah. I think I would like the speed skating one. That would be fun. <sighs> that would be fun. I saw something mm. along those lines that uh, it's not it basically the two main ones got way out ahead of everybody and one of them went kind of slow and then everybody slowed down. And that one sped around, I guess, and like got second somehow. Even though I don't know, it's too much to explain. I would love to do that one. All all about speed. Again, quick. You crash. You're out. All right, let's chill. Let's watch everybody else do their their thing. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. A um, kind of B side. Foo Fighters song that I love is uh, Run. I have to hear it. I'm not they uh, names. they age themselves about 30 years and they're in a nursing home playing to all the nursing home residents. Mm-hmm. And it turns into a mosh pit. I uh, know I'll be looking for it during the next commercial break. It's a jam. I'm sure I've heard it. I mean... We'd run... I am. Uh, you say fun is the name of it. Run, run. I'm looking at the uh, new uniforms for the Denver Broncos. Oh, yeah, that came out this morning. They have sunset orange, midnight navy, and summit white. They're all like they're they're straight on, so you can't see the horse. Head on the side. They're replicas of UTSA. They look exactly like the Roadrunners. Do they have just... I, f- I feel like over the years, Bronco uniforms have been... They had about, about a 3.5 grade point average. Like really good, I, good uniforms. That's yeah. how many games they usually win a year. No, I'm looking oh, at yeah. this here. Take a look at that. Oh, those have meep meep written all over them. Oh, 100 percent. Like the bottom ones, like. Mm-hmm. Oh, nothing against UTSA. Well, yeah, I mean that's but their look. It's even got a little bit of a UTEP look to it as well. Oh, uh, yeah. There's some but, minor in there, yeah, there's too. there's some minor. Like that, that bottom left one. Oh, there that's is. that. that You're right. Um, the white one is UTSA. Yeah. The blue one is UTEP. Man. 
Not a good look. Not a good couple of years for the old Broncos. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Good thing I'm not a Broncos fan, though. Wow. Uh, let's do the burning questions, please, Lucas. Two minutes of nonstop in-your-face inquiries with no end in sight. It's time now for Burning Questions. Hit them up. All right, gentlemen, if you can only win one conference series the rest of the season, which one are the Red Raiders winning? At Kansas this week, at home for the most likely to win? That you want them to win. Um, yeah, you can go most likely if it's different. No, I, I I don't want to do most likely. I want to do the one I want to win. And, yeah, you want And to I want to win against OU for many reasons. Uh, last time you're going to play them in conference, they're number, currently number one. I'm sure their RPI is going to be great. Um, would help you gallop and try to catch up with them. Give me that one. Lucas? Yeah, I think the OU series is definitely the oh, – I know it's the most important one. It's their final home series as well. So yeah. uh, Protect the home field. Yeah, so got to get the momentum, keep it going, and then it will definitely help your RPI 100%. You don't feel better about your team if you, say, go one and two against OU at home and then go sweep Oklahoma State, kind of proving, hey – we can win on the road before. Uh, I mean, I just think you're going into a lot of what ifs there and a lot of this, this has, this, this, this has. We to know happen. they can win at home, though. Well, I know. We know they yeah. can win against Oklahoma State, too. They do it every year. This team hasn't. They haven't won much on the road, right? All right. Uh, which Red Raider will be drafted the highest in the NFL draft, which gets underway Thursday? And runs through the weekend. I mean, I can throw some names out for you. Tyler Owens. Rabbit. I, I saw a rabbit Miles. in the third round. Miles Cole. Right, Rabbit's the first one that came to mind. No Miles Cole. Adrian Taylor Demerson. I, I think he's he had, he's had the, the camps. He's had the visits. and Yeah. I think he's definitely it. Over under third round. Right in the middle of it. Third round. I saw as high as second round for him, which was kind of crazy. He's he's, he's an We've easy guy to like, We've seen some defensive though. surprises go earlier than we thought. Yeah. I saw that in the third round he was going to Seattle. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, I might have to become a Seahawk fan. Yeah, no, I'm happy for him. You know, personality certainly helps. He's obviously proven he can do a lot more than just uh, win you over that way, but – I wish him, uh, unless he goes to the Broncos in those ugly uniforms. Oh, um, uh, if you had to watch one of the one of these five, I'm going to take the Dave Matthews band off of there for you. One of these five newly minted rock and roll Hall of Famers in concert: Mary J. Blige, Foreigner, Foreigner. A Tribe Called Quest, Cool in the Gang, and Ozzy Osbourne. Foreigner, Foreigner. I knew I should have taken them off as well. Lucas. You don't get Foreigner because he just took Foreigner. So, Mary J. Blige, A Tribe Called Quest, Cool in the Gang, and Ozzy Osbourne, which is great because most of them are old for you. So, you have have to uh, choose somebody you might not know much about. Probably Mary J. Yeah. Yeah. Blige, yeah, which is probably the closest to your, uh, yeah. your age range there. No desire to watch uh, Ozzy Osbourne? Mm-mm. Not no. current Ozzy, obviously. No. You don't like any Ozzy? Uh, just not one of my favorites. Yeah. Didn't he have a reality TV show? He did. Most people probably know him more for his reality, reality TV. TV show. Yeah. He was famous before that, but yes. And apparently he was high the entire time he was doing that. Oh, yeah. Well, Painkillers, probably. The... Um... <laughs> This will be impossible and boring, and I'm going to say it anyway. There was a cartoon that had these two little aliens, okay? And they took over the earthly realm that they had entered with a thing called the Foreigner Belt. 
So when they put the foreigner belt on, Mm -hmm. he would say whatever song title, and then that would, I'm about to give you double vision. (laughs) And then he had his eyes crossed. And so he was just going through the entire time doing foreigner song Song titles titles. to weaponized foreign (laughs) foreigner song titles. And what was this cartoon called? It was a foreigner cartoon? No, 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 no. It was, um, what's Master Shake? I have no idea what you're talking about. Master Shake and, and Fry Man. The French fry guy. Oh, I know what you're talking and, about. And uh, Meat Wad. Yeah. yeah. I don't know the show, but I know what you're talking Aqua about. Aqua Squad something <laughs> team force. Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Aqua, yeah. Yes, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. That they, was they the they one. Hungry. And they had these two little aliens that were Atari character looking things. And they used the foreigner belt <laughs> to wage war. We got more coming up. Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Yo, it is hour number two of the, nope, three of the end of the bench. <laughs> Numbers and I, you know, it's it's difficult. Not easy for me. Nor I. A Hacks Collier and Lucas edition of the program i'm sorry the collier thing is just gonna be something you're gonna have to live with yeah no i'm used to it yep we're we're used to it david collier been called collier forever yeah yep uh texas tech is call me dave and we're good oh no dave i don't like dave you know what i don't like what gee off gee off I don't like Dave because it always comes with Coolier afterwards. Kind of the Ma- Michael Bolton thing. Why should I change my name? He's the one who sucks. <laughs> It'd be different if my name was Dave Coolier. Then I would get it. It would under- I would understand. Now all I have is panda bears in my uh, timeline. By the way, it could be worse. Since we talked about pandas, it could be worse. It could be Paige Spearnack. I have to. Um, be careful when I have this, you know, timeline up in in uh, public because <laughs> my computer may have come to rest on the Paige Spearnack twenty yeah. second video of her hitting a golf ball barely clothed. Yeah, and then next thing you know, you get you know, fifteen more videos of barely clothed women hitting golf balls. Got to be careful. Just go to the following, right? Yes, definitely go through the following. Man, those uniforms are just hideous. Yeah, somebody said, did the the Broncos lose a bet? They're just bad. Like, what's wrong with... No, whatever. Not my team, not my problem, I guess. I don't have an NFL team, so I have no problem. We're getting pretty close to new uniforms here. Oh, I know, dude. Man, it's close. How big is this sale going to be? Like I know it's, I've never been to it. I've never I've never purchased anything. I think I might have worked one weekend when it was going on and swung by it real quick, but I've never been to one to buy anything. It's got to be ridiculous. I mean, everything's going. Yeah, everything. Everything must go. It's going to be an adjustment. All changes, but I think it'll be in the long run a good change. Maybe I can check to see if they have any size shoes to replace my kids' shoes. <laughs> Sorry. So can hard. we get so Brooks? On. No, we don't need any some shoes. shoes. We're totally fine. We can afford our own shoes. It's just the principle of some little punk walking down the hall of steel. Three-hour bowling time. Exactly. Could have bought some shoes with that. Could have bought some easily. shoes with that. Well, shouldn't have to. I'd already purchased the shoes. That's the point. What kind of shoes were they? They were just Nike running shoes. They weren't ridiculously expensive. But, that, again, not the point. Not the point. Juvenile delinquents. Shouldn't have a kid running around the hall stealing shoes from people. That's the point. 
<laughs> Why were his shoes off to begin with? Um, no, there were other shoes, like running shoes. Like, the, like and, gym class yeah. shoes? Oh, and yeah. the band hall, you have to set stuff out, out in the hall. So. I just saw that the, uh, the kid that used to call me the worst official in the history of the sport when he was seven years old, he started off his career at OU. Mm-hmm. Then he went to ORU. Now he's playing for Northeastern State in the Riverhawks. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Trey. <laughs> I love your daddy, but you're a different guy. Um, have we have we checked the real time RPI today? Where are we at? Let's check that right now. Last I saw, it was like thirty three. The race to the RPI. Yep. Texas a m one, Arkansas two. Yeah. You find us? Going to. OU 22. Oklahoma State 25 after losing two of three to K State. K State 34. Texas Tech 28, baby. There we go. Into the 20s. Let's you go. Got, you got a couple in front of you. You see it. UCF is in 10th place in the Big 12. They're 27th. I know. I don't know. It, eventually, playing Florida doesn't really matter when Florida is barely above 500, right? Hmm. They're 35th. You know, I, I'm just going to guarantee you something here. That's not gonna, you're, we're not going to like it at all. TCU is going to get in the tournament. Watch them get into this thing. Their RPI is at 41. Conference records 8 and 13. I want to see who they play here. I'm looking it up. 23 and 15. Overall? Yeah. All right. Sweep of Houston, swept by Cincinnati. That isn't necessarily bad if you look at the, a lot of the top 20. Mystically canceled their series with UTRGV. Yeah. Win two of three with Tech. Win one of three. With Texas, they host K-State, they go to Baylor, and they host West Virginia. I've seen them in some projections. I'm just telling you, they're going to backdoor into this tournament. Just have a feeling. I guess that means this conference is pretty good then. If You, can... you want to talk about conference respect, Here's the. this is unbelievable to me. The Auburn Tigers are 19 and 20. 2 and 16 in the SEC. RPI of 44. <laughs> uh, that's because they played all of it. Because you just got to look at the top of the RPI. And then you know why. Strength of schedule? Four out of the top seven. Two. Four out of the top seven RPI SEC schools. Four of the top six, sorry. By the way, Tech's strength of schedule, 51. Ole Miss has the strongest schedule. Ole Miss is 6-12 and 12 in the SEC with an RPI of 24. DBU is 17, potential host. Oklahoma State, potential host. DBU just had a tough weekend, though. They might drop a little more. Aggies, Arkansas, Kentucky, Clemson, Florida State, Tennessee, North Carolina, East Carolina, all will host. I saw a projection that had Tech going to Winston-Salem. Wake Forest currently has a 9 RPI. They had a good weekend, too. They were 3-1. and one. I think a series win over another ranked foe. I got that here. See if I can get to it real quick. That Oregon State team you played earlier this year is thirty and nine, RPI of fifteen. Yeah, they got a series win against Florida State over the weekend. Wait, did Florida State top ten team? Playing time is not required. This is the end of the bench podcast from one hundred point seven. The score. Lots of Beastie Boys' favorite songs and uh, cocktail recipes for David Collier on the Yates Full Length Center chat line that he can take with him. Yeah. Learn how to make some stuff for you. Jig it up, jig it up. 
The Hax Collier and Lucas final segment of the end of the bench here on 100.7 The Score, 100.7thescore.com. We've had a good time today. Bottom line will be coming up here at noon. Bottom line, boys, kicking off their week. Sabotage is my favorite from D-Rock. No Sleep Till Brooklyn, sentimental favorite. Paul Revere, Margarita. Oh, my gosh, Davey, a dang margarita. This is like choice in the women quiz. Just uh-huh. epic failure. D.C. allegedly drinking these at the alley all night long. It's a uh, fruity drink. There's uh, orange, pineapple, and a cherry. Hey, I will be drinking all those on my honeymoon, and I have no shame in that <laughs> whatsoever. Just looking at the ocean on the beach of Hawaii, I will drink any of the fruity drinks. I do not care because I will be in paradise. It only makes sense. Okay. Way to rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you for rubbing it in. Um, let's see here. I'm 25% Belgian. My grandfather was a first generation American. Stella is good. Call your channeling is in her. Chuck Hines. We went over that one. Yep. Vodka and Red Bull. Mm-hmm. Chuck would have said uh, Arkansas Moonshine. How cheap is the stuff at the equipment sales, like shirts and polos? I don't know. I, never I, I genuinely don't know. Yeah, I've never been in line to buy anything. Never been. I wish I could tell you. I would think, like, half off, but I don't know. Yeah, I I don't want to promise anything. In no, this. yeah. yeah. Hack said it's half off. Half off. The Jeff Haxton special. Just add guys the promo 10%. code Haxton. Yeah, I've never been in line. I've never stood in line. So you have to go check it out on your own. Sorry. Let us know, though. No shame in not knowing any of that stuff, but you did know a good amount of it. You're just being self-righteous. You're better than that, DC. Ooh. Okay, whatever. Oof. Yeesh. Whatever. Bench warmers, I'm going to the Oklahoma City Thunder game to Wednesday night. How early should I get there if I want to get a souvenir? Also, what is a good restaurant to go in Oklahoma City for the game? I haven't been to Bricktown since. I mean, I guess Mickey Mantles is like. Yeah, Mickey Mantles is. If you're looking to spend a lot of money and get a, a terrific meal, you could do it at Mickey Mantles. That would probably be my extent because that's probably one of the few places I've eaten downtown what there is since the, uh, the Big 12 baseball tournament is was it there. Chilinos? That's, that's uh, it, yeah. Chilinos is pretty dang good. I like that a lot. They have the, um, you know, you can get the enchiladas with the egg mm. over the top. Huevos rancheros. And if you had asked me that, I might have been able to get that one for you. Throw a little tequila in there. Oh. <laughs> um, if I were you, I'd go to the Bricktown Brewery. They used to have ribs from Jake's and Chickasha up there. Um, bottom line is you can go down that road and not – you can have probably 20 to 25 choices and you won't go wrong. But I would go to Chilinos. I really like that. And um, as far as getting a souvenir, I mean, just an hour before. I was about to say, I don't think that's going to be – It's not a big issue at all. Yeah. That shouldn't be a problem. Have fun. I went to the first Thunder game ever, and that's the only one that I've been to. I went to one. I think it might have been the last time I was there when the Big 12 tournament was. No, it couldn't have been the Big 12. It must have been the Big 12 baseball tournament going on at the same time. It was Portland against Oklahoma City. Yeah, we act like we don't drink that much while we're at work. I've also never went golfing when the boss is out of town from the Ace 40 Center chant line. Got a TV up here. I don't think we can get away with drinking at work. We got a camera right there. Uh, Choice got away with it in the parking lot. <laughs> That's parking lot, though. Bench warmers. Why is it the people who don't drink alcohol wear it like it's some kind of badge of honor? I don't smoke crack, but I don't go around bragging all the time that I don't do it. Again, sorry. I, I won't bring up bring up my drinking habits again. Uh, I'm sorry I gave you the my the, uh, the booze quiz. I'm getting attacked because I say I don't drink. 
But you were drinking at the bowling alley. Yes, and I had four beers the entire Atta time. That a boy. That's a good number. And again, I can't tell you the last time I had a beer. So you should have had three shots of Jaeger, and then you would have been right on yep. point with Bullfighter. Yeah, you'd have been pin for pin until you went over the top, and then it's over. And I wouldn't have known the difference <sighs> either, either way. Had a turkey as well in one of my games. Yeah, yeah. Gobble gobble. You go, Lucas. We shall partake this summer's cruise unlimited. For Steven, save the equipment question for choice. That is how he got rich. Bench warmers. Start bench cut ice cream, chocolate, vanilla, cookies, and cream. Now we got it going from Tweep A. Boy, I'm just going to get pulverized for this as well. Um, vanilla, start. Man, I don't even like cookies and cream. Uh, I guess chocolate and then toss cookies and cream. I could toss both chocolate and cookies and cream, though. Yeah, I know. That's fine. You guys had more chocolate ice cream for you. Okay, my favorite is chocolate almond. But I'll start chocolate, bench cookies and cream, and wipe out vanilla. Food quiz for tomorrow. I'll let him try for redemption. Okay, we may do that. Okay. I'm trying to publish here, but struggling. Hideaway Pizza, you're welcome. That's from the editor. Not a huge fan of the uh, satellite hideaways, but <laughs> it's still great. <laughs> Snooty, the the OG hideaway guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you do walk, if set foot in a satellite hideaway, you have to specify thin crust. It's not really thin. But it's not the hand-tossed spit in the face of the true essence of hideaway. Hand-tossed, I would rather punt it across the street than eat it. It's it's an abomination. Yeah. And that's what they serve you first. So say thin crust, trust me. Is the Toby Keith's place still downtown? I don't even know. I love this bar and grill. Yeah. Yeah. I eat there. Wasn't bad. I got a big fried bologna sandwich. That was solid. Viva 70, 73, the Stockyards is an excellent restaurant in Oklahoma City. The only fine in Sonic, the only f- dine in Sonic is Bricktown. Gotcha. Yeah. Satellite Hideaway, horse name. I really want to replace some of the names at the last minute. I couldn't agree more. The names, not attractive this year. Not nearly as well thought out, planned, voted on. I'm ashamed a little bit. Still love you, but we didn't do very good with the 1 through 20 that we have. Again, just my thoughts. Speaking of golf, just got back from Torrey Pines. Wow. Wow. I applaud people that can raise teenagers and not drink much. Not me. That makes one of you, apparently. You non-drinker. You say it with your chest. (laughs) Oh, man, we got a flood of these down the stretch. I apologize for not drinking as much. I'll work on that right after the show. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on. Can you figure out these last two here? Uh, why is it when I decide not to drink for a weekend or two friends, coworkers, random people, the golf course at like, I have no idea. Yeah. Jamie said, you do you. Yeah. I got a second person that at least that's what I'm going with. All right. Thanks for listening in today to the end of the bench. The bottom line is coming up next. Thanks to my man, Dave Collier. Oop, I did it. And I didn't mean to. That's David fine. Collier. Yeah, you're good. The pink hooded one, Lucas White. I'm Hacks. Have a great Monday. And join us tonight, Red Raider Baseball, Tim Tadlock, 6 on Double T 97.3. This has been the End of the Bench podcast from 100.7 The Score. Go to 107thescore.com for more from the Double T Sports Network.